Allen, sir. Thank you, Chris. I'm Scott Bradley. I'm the CEO and founder of Call Silencer. A year ago, my father gave me a call in a panic. He just received a call from his grandson, my son, who was in jail and needed $2,000 immediately to get out. Hearing that, I'm in a panic. I immediately try to get a hold of my son. I call him. The phone rings. It rings again. It rings again. And then I hear this voice on the other end of the line. Oh! Hey, Dad, how you doing? I'm at Starbucks having a nice latte. What's up? Turns out my father was almost the next victim of the grandparent phone scam. Realizing this, I immediately put together a team, uh, including a 30-year veteran of AT&T Bell Labs, to build the technology to silence robocalls and to protect parents from phone scams. The problem is that over 50 billion robocalls are made into the United States this year. Over $10 billion will be lost to phone scams. You hear about it every day now in the news, whether it's writing, whether it's online. And the majority of those calls go to the 33 million Americans that have landline phones that tend to be older people. So what's the solution? And I never give a problem without a solution. The solution is call silencer. So we are a consumer device designed to block robocalls. We're 100 times more effective than current solutions and will protect parents from phone scams. One important thing is when it was designed, it was designed so that even your parent could use it. Right? I look at it and no buttons. Everything's done through AI so that you plug it in. It will then block the calls for you. Very simple, it sits in between your phone network and your cable modem. It will actually block all the phones in your entire network. So what we do is we anonymously uh, aggregate and then analyze all the calls. And then once we've learned that something is a robocall, call, we can then block it across all the devices in the network. So we do have an unfair advantage as well. When you think about what's out there in the past, um, Historically, it's been what we call button products. They have a single button on the front and it would require human interaction. So that someone would see that a hero call coming in, phone would ring, they'd ring, they'd go get it, they'd look at their caller ID and they'd say, oh, I don't know that number, it must be a roll call, and they'd press the button to stop it from calling. Well, then the phone rings another half hour later and they go over and they do the same thing. And that happens again and again. Then those people change the number, call back again next week, and it's just a repetitive cycle. So what we've done is automated that process and able to protect 100 times more effectively than current solutions. So uh, we are getting ready to, uh, to launch on, on Kickstarter uh, coming up uh, early next year. Um, if you can do one thing for me, if you can take out your phones, I know you all have your cell phones with you. Take those out for just a moment. Okay, and if you could go to www.callsilencer.com slash BNT, Boston New Technology. Okay, that was put up just for you guys. And if you go there, there are actually two options. So one is if you have parents and you're concerned about robocalls, please join our wait list and uh, we'll let you know before we let the masses know. Um, if you're not worried about robocalls or you don't have parents that you love, uh, but you still like to pass the word, <laughs> I'd ask you to go up there and uh, click on the button that uh, will give you information from time to time and if you can share that, we'd appreciate it. So uh, with that, thank you very much. All right, I'll take questions while other people are uh, clicking on little buttons. Yes? Ah, so okay, uh, very, very important question, I promise clear. So the, uh, my, my belief is that my parents can't access a, a, a network, meaning uh, a, you know, the, the internet, et cetera. Um, this is all telephone based. So you plug one side into your cable phone modem, one side into your home network, home, home phone network, and it will work for you. So you don't have to access the internet.
Dallas, what about collections agencies, banks, and stuff like that? They use Auto Dallas too. Right, excellent question. So the question was, uh, you, you block robocalls, but there, there are some legitimate robocalls. There, there's the collection agencies, there are uh, the, the, post, uh, the police station, um, a lot of people are worried about you know, the, the automated calls uh, from their, their schools. So we, we do two things. One is we, we continue to build a, a black list of, of known bad perpetrators, while we also keep a white list of acceptable um, robocalls. Yes? Right. So, so the, the question, very good question. How, how do you how do you update things? What is update the blacklist, the whitelist? Um, that that's why we have uh, a guy that was formerly at and Bell Labs. So we, we update things dynamically uh, because you do. The reality is, um, you know, there are you know, hundred thousand plus bad actors out there. Uh, they're changing their numbers. They're growing on a regular basis. Yes. So you said that. Um the blacklist gets updated as more and more devices get, you know, receive robocalls. So is the value of the product tied to the size of the network? Ah, right, so, so the question is, we, we, we are updating things, uh, we're updating as more and more uh, robocalls are, are discovered. Um, is the, the, the value or price related to the size of the network? But the, to the value to the, not the price so much, but the value to the user. Right, yeah, so that's, that's really good here. So on, on the value, so yeah, so we see that, um, you know, it's, the more people that use the product, the more valuable it becomes because a, a, a known bad actor on one can then be blocked on all. So yes, the, the value does grow as more people are using it. Yes? What's the difference between this and the other product out there that you registered your number and you did a, it did a split call? Correct. Right, so there, there are a number of uh, different technologies out there for, for blocking uh, robocalls and uh, trying to. So the, the biggest thing that we do is, because we're focused on, on home phone systems, the only way to actually totally silence it and block a call from getting in is to actually have a device there on the home network or home, home phone system. So it doesn't ring? It does not ring at all, no. So you know, whether you're a, a, a home-based business, phone doesn't ring, you're at home, you're watching TV, uh, you're having dinner, uh, no words at all. Yes? So, uh, <clears throat> specifically to the learning process, right? Because the, the numbers has changed, all those robocallers, right? The, they evolve. Um, and then uh, as they kind of evolve, right? Is the learning process occurring on the device itself? Or is it like really some sort of a network and getting somehow? Right, so the, the question is on, in terms of the, the, the learning as, as these you know, bad actors are, are changing their numbers, et cetera, how, how do we <laughs> learn and how, how do you then get that information back? So um, yeah, when, when we're looking, there, there are many ways of learning what a, a bad actor is. Uh, for instance, if we look at not just that a number is known to be bad, but if there is a number that's dialing out and it makes five calls in one minute, you know that's a robocall, right? A human can't do it that fast. So that's, that's one way, for instance, of, of, of growing that. Um, as we're aggregating the information anonymously and learning it, then we, we pass it to this product. But we have the ability at the back end to actually be doing a, a very deep knowledge and learning. So you're pushing the updates to the device? Correct. So it is yeah. connected to the internet? Uh, no, it's everything's, all right, so is it during updates or anything connected to the internet? No. We, we do everything via the phone, um, and that's very important because okay, my parents certainly um, you know, can't connect something to the internet. So we want to make it as simple as possible, plug in one side to your cable phone modem, plug in one side to your phone, and then we'll take care of everything from there. No power supply? No power supply, no, no. So uh, that was something that was very challenging to be able to uh, you know, meet FCC requirements to uh, to not pull too much uh, current down, but be able to do it without a power supply. Yes? Other than the, um, the list and the data that you get, is there also an algorithm listening as the call comes in to determine if it's a robocall? 
Yeah, so uh, you know, in addition to uh, known entities, is there an algorithm to, to determine if it is? So we use a number of different methods to determine if something is a robocall. But yes, there is something that we'll, we'll be looking at um, individual calls to see if, uh, if they, they meet those dynamics. Is it a database? Is it an algorithm, et cetera? Yes, in the corner. Are there any plans to create a cell phone equivalent product? Are there any plans to create a cell phone equivalent product? So the, the, the reason I started was to protect my parents. Right? That, that was the first and foremost in the thought. Um, right now, it's, it's to evolve additional technologies that require um, a physical presence, um, but there's a lot of the back end information that could eventually evolve to, uh, to cell phones. Right, thank you very much.